Welcome to the DevOps Lab. Now, DevOps is all about continuously delivering value. Now, to figure out if you are delivering value, it is vital to understand what is going on in your application during runtime. Is it up or down? Is it performing well? And what are users really doing in your app? On this episode of DevOps Lab, join us as Asaf from Logs.io, where they show us how you can easily figure all of this out using Logs.io. Asaf, how's everything going with you? Ah, things are great, uh, given uh, given the the weird situation this whole world is uh, is coming to. So uh, other than that, things are going well. Uh, yeah. We've actually had to uh, uh, quite adopt to we're a company that used to all work from the offices and uh, have a very vibrant social life in the office. And working from home is is definitely a challenge, obviously a challenge on us and a challenge on our customers and managing operations in real time. Yeah, it's very, very different, isn't it? So why don't you tell our viewers who you are and what it is you guys do? So we at Logs.io are an open source observability platform. And uh, observability platform means that we, uh, we help organization understand the health of their system by looking at the outside uh, uh, measurement that are being done. Uh, these measurements can be metric information, can be logs, uh, and it can be distributed tracing that we provide. We're built on top of three uh, leading open source providers. One of them is the, the ELK stack, which we run as a cloud service. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing, Grafana-based uh, solution for metrics. And the third thing is a Jaeger-based solution for traces and uh, distributed tracing and, and, and APM. So you guys, is basically the big benefit here is you guys give a single pane of glass into uh, all these different logs so you can see what's going on with your application? Yeah, the benefit is we give a single pane of glass across the different uh, elements that any software these days is emitting, whether it's a numeric data in the form of metrics and, and uh, infrastructure monitoring and also uh, uh, the logs and obviously the, um, the traces and the APM information as well. So collab uh, controlling everything, being able to co-locate everything in is, and, and correlate everything is a big advantage and it's something that we provide. That sounds pretty cool. Can you show us a little bit of what this looks like? Great. So uh, thank you very much. So this is uh, uh, this is Logs.io, and let me take you from the top. So uh, okay. the first thing that we have of is the ability to easily ingest data uh, into the system. So uh, being able to easily connect to all the cloud component, whether it's uh, AWS or Azure, uh, literally with a click of a button, you can deploy the, the connectors and, and get the data into Logs.io. The next thing I want to show you is, is our metrics product that is built on Grafana. Uh, one of the things you can see here, uh, the system comes with hundreds of pre-made dashboards around uh, different components. And uh, if I click on one of them, you can see this is an example of a, a Kubernetes cluster. It's deployed on, a, on, a, on an Azure environment. It does connect to the login information, and you can see here that we're obtaining all the configuration changes from the logs and all the failures and errors that are happening, just marking them on the graphs, as, as, as well as uh, metric information from the, the relevant devices. And I can see here in this environment that I have a problem with my Nginx server, uh, and clicking on it, I can see that it's uh, scaling up, so I need to be able to analyze what's going on here. Uh, mm -hmm. Very quickly, you can just go and analyze what's going on with exploring uh, these logs in Kibana. So I've noticed that there is an issue that has been highlighted by the infrastructure monitoring component. Now I can click a button and just jump to Kibana. Uh, what we do here is we automatically copy the container name. We already automatically create the filters for the time zone that I was looking at uh, and all the relevant information and making it very, very easy and very uh, streamlined for me to troubleshoot and get to the root cause uh, uh, much quicker. So I see here that uh, on top of the increase in memory and CPU, there's also an increase of uh, IO exception, too many open files. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a good indication for me of where to start uh, uh, digging in and where to start analyzing the problem. 
Uh, once I find a problem uh, and I know that uh, this is a problem, I can also create an alert. Uh, and uh, that alert is going to trigger and uh, is going to provide information to me every time something like that ever happens again. Mm -hmm. uh, we do we connect to uh, devices, to services like PagerDuty, uh, like Slack, like uh, any other kind of like alert management and alert, uh, uh, alert monitoring uh, uh, devices. So these are things we can do here. One a few other things I want to show you about uh, Logs.io. Mm -hmm. uh, let me spend a little bit here. Um, so uh, going back to a different view is uh, if you want to troubleshoot and you want to take a look at the logs that, uh, uh, that you're presenting uh, with the plain vanilla ELK, which you can deploy out of the box, it's an open source component, um, you can search and you can scan through the logs and sometimes you run into, like in this situation, we have tens of thousands of log lines to just go one by one to read. Uh, we've developed a unique uh, AI mechanism called uh, log patterns. What we do is we cluster all the logs relative to their originating uh, uh, source code line, uh, mm -hmm. which makes it very easy for you to turn 18,000 or 16,000 uh, log line, like in this example, uh, into about 20 different patterns, which makes it very easy to say, hey, I know uh, proxy request is probably irrelevant for me for my investigation. I can eliminate it out. Um, and then I can scroll down and I can see something that is relevant, like uh, maybe a transaction aborted uh, that is relevant for me or uh, uh, something like that. And I can see duplicate entry and uh, or fail to create the date. I want to look at it even though it's taken 0.51% of the time. I can mm -hmm. quickly uh, filter that and analyze that and just get to the bottom of the problem uh, with very quick troubleshooting time and, and uh, resolution for it. Um, so we provide other things uh, that we do. I think one thing I mentioned is uh, is also an integration with Jaeger for distributed tracing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I can I can look at this information. So uh, another another uh, cool capability of Logs.io is the uh, Logs.io Insights. What we do here is that uh, we match, uh, and this is why it's so good for devs, we match version upgrades and deployments and pod restarts, uh, which are like the vertical events here, with exceptions and errors that happening. So we have two types of insight. One of them is the cognitive insight. And the way the cognitive insight works is that uh, we crawl the internet uh, mm -hmm. and we look for threads that are talking about uh, issues with IT operation, issues with devil, issues with security. Um, and um, you can see here, this is, a, this is a potential security violation that we track. We keep track of which blog post or which discussion thread was talking about it. We do it continuously. Uh, cool. And we've actually built the biggest uh, uh, database of, uh, of issues around this. So we detect this and now we give you a hint that this is uh, something that started to happen. So this is the cognitive insight and you can obviously assign it to someone, you can change the severity. You can see how it's behaving and you can see the pattern and when it started to happen. The second thing is an application insight where we automatically identify errors and exceptions. So mm -hmm. uh, we track it and we, uh, uh, we many, many different uh, programming languages and we know how to track your errors and exceptions. All of it done automatically without any human intervention. So you don't need to define anything in here. And you can say, okay, this is a nested server, exce server of exception started to happen. Uh, I started to happen on June 27, 2018. It was last seen on April 7 uh, at, uh, at 6, 10 p.m. And this is the profile of how it's behaving and how it's, how it's happening in my environment. And I can correlate it to events that are happening uh, on that time frame. So that's the strength of, uh, uh, of uh, Logs.io. Very, very cool stuff. So not only do you provide a single pane of glass for all these different logs file, Using the power of AI and, and also with, with your proprietary knowledge, you help filter out a lot of the noise from these logs files and, and even help users figure out how to mitigate their problems. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, we, we do a few things. First of all, we make it, uh, we focus a lot on cost efficiency. We realize that running observability, running this type of system can be costly. Uh, so we've built a lot of capabilities into our system in order to enable a cost-efficient solution, which we have a lot of techniques to do that. 
Uh, the mm -hmm. other thing is significantly reducing the troubleshooting time, which at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Uh, uh, customers and, and companies keep these types of system when things go bad, when things go, uh, when there is a problem in the system, and especially when we all work in a DevOps environment where there, we use continuous integration, continuous delivery, uh, um, developers can get uh, a bug into the production. And it's okay, and it's okay as long as you find it quickly, as long as you revert it, and as long as the impact of it is minimal, uh, mm -hmm. The pace and the speed of development kind of like uh, outweighs the the, uh, uh, the ability for, for uh, 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 scalability and around it. So we provide that and we give them the, the full visibility in a completely uh, cost-effective solution built on open source component, just the way engineers want and like using it with additional AI component to, uh, uh, to help them expedite uh, troubleshooting uh, and help them alert on, on any event that is happening in order to prevent future incidents from happening. Very cool. So I know you covered this earlier, but I just want to reiterate this again. This fully integrates within Azure. To integrate this into Azure, it's pretty simple? Yes. So integrating into Azure is very simple. If you want to integrate the log information, all you need to do in Azure is go to all of the different services you're using in Azure and check the box to send the logs uh, into the, the uh, Azure Event Hub. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we're here with the click of a button, uh, you basically deploy the login into Azure. It's a custom template that goes into the environment and we have a, um, like literally less than uh, three steps in order to configure it in uh, in Azure and uh, and automatically ship all the logs. So this configuration has to be done once uh, and then every log component that you send into Event Hub is automatically being uh, sent to us. So we also support Event Hub, uh, mm -hmm. we support Microsoft Graph, uh, and uh, we support other uh, uh, kind of like Azure uh, activity logs that you can deploy. And all of it is very, very simple to do and very seamless. Wow, this is very, very cool stuff. All right, so oftentimes when we talk DevOps, we concentrate on just the CI CD portion, right? Because it's super cool and super fancy. But knowing what your app is doing in production is also vital. And it's the best way to see if you are delivering value sprint after sprint. Logs.io, man, it looks like a fantastic to use inside of Azure. So check them out with the links down below and Remember to join us next week on the DevOps Lab. Mm -hmm.